Hey, all right. Welcome back to 3D3 War Games. All right. So, some of you have asked for a tutorial um, on how I do my lava bases. Um, I feature these on my Grey Knights and my Grey Knights specifically, uh, but you can use these for any army that you really feel like doing for. So, we're going to start off really simple. Uh, you take a base. Uh, for this one, I've chosen a Terminator, um, uh, not a Terminator base, but a, uh, a Dreadnought base. Uh, it's blank, as you can see, and we're going to start by adding some cork. And you can do this in any way that you want to, just kind of rip it apart and add it to certain spots that you want. You don't have to follow what I do, of course, uh, so just get creative and see what you like to do. Cool. So I have a huge bit of uh, cork board here. Um, I get these at uh, my local uh, hobby shop. Um, I forget where I got this one from. I think it was either Michael's or like Hobby Lobby or something. But they come in like big sheets of uh, 12 by 12, and there's usually like three or four pieces of these in each box that you get. Uh, I think they're like no more than $15, so they're pretty cheap. And, uh, yeah, if you want to make cool custom bases, I suggest you get uh, a pack of them. So, have fun with them. So, we're going to start off, um, just kind of rip the cork apart, like so. Um, pieces don't have to be uh, perfect or, or anything like that. Just kind of rip some, rip some stuff off in shapes that uh, you want. Um, we will shape them to the base in a second. So grab a couple pieces like that, and then toss the big thing off to the side, because that's all we really need for a base this size. So, I'm going to kind of play around with it a little bit, see what you like. Uh, for purposes of doing this one, I want to leave an open space in the middle. I don't want it to be all closed off like that. Um, so we're going to trim it down just a little bit. So. Um, I will kind of show you how I do it, and you guys can sit back and enjoy for a minute while I play with some cork. Yeah. Leave it nice and open like that. And then what you can do is you can kind of build up. Now keep in mind you got to remember what uh, what model you're going to be putting on uh, this base. I don't have a particular model for this one, so I'm just going to kind of um, build it up a little bit so that you guys can see um, the different potential that you have with this port and stuff. It's really a lot of fun to work with, and it makes really cool looking pieces. So. Uh, I think we'll kind of leave it like that uh, for now. Just so you get kind of an idea. We got a little bit of a, a valley going on in the middle here, which is pretty cool for lava flow. So, yeah, I'm gonna start gluing stuff in, and I'll show you how I do that. All right, here we go. So I use uh, Gale Force Nine uh, super glue. Um, I top it with a um, thumb pin. Um, just because I hate the, the caps that they come with, they always uh, they always get stuck. So I use a uh, little thumb pin, which is good. Anyways, so to get uh, the desired effect here, you usually just kind of take them off uh, the bases for now. I do a little bit of glue underneath. Now the cork tends to soak up the super glue, so you just kind of have to be careful. Um, sometimes you don't get it to stay just right, like that. See how that ends kind of coming up like that? That's all right. Not a big deal. Just kind of hold it in place for uh, a couple seconds, and it should bond. Um, if it doesn't, feel free to grab um, the edges, like so. Just do a little bit of super glue on the edges, and that should hold it in place. It's going to soak it up. 
that. That's okay. Okay, now it's not moving anywhere. And that's exactly what we want. Just be careful you don't glue your fingers to the cork because um, it's never a good time. Cool. So that one's kind of good, right? So, flip this one over. Now, I find it easiest here to kind of see where the, the cork kind of lands on the base and then put some of the glue on, on the base instead of the bottom of the cork for this part. So we're gonna take that off, keep our fingers there for reference, that's kind of where the cork is going, and just kind of grab the general shape of the cork. Then, flop it right back down. And as you can see, the cork is literally um, absorbing the super glue, kind of like a sponge, which is really kind of cool. It means it's working. Uh, it's not going anywhere, which is good. So now we'll do the other side. Um, again, do the top part first. Compensate for the fact that the cork is going to absorb a lot of it. Hold it down. Yeah, see it. it uh, <laughs> this cork is very absorbent. So grab the sides again. Just let it soak it all up. Funny thing about the cork too is when you do it like this too, it um, absorbs all the super glue, and then it becomes really rigid um, on the side, which helps for later on when we're actually painting it because the uh, cork becomes uh, very hard and it doesn't flake off when we're dry brushing, which is awesome. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing, kind of reference the our, our fingers there, so it kind of leads to, and then. Grab some of the super glue and just do a rough outline of where the cork was. Again, don't worry about doing an exact outline because of the fact that cork absorbs the hell out of the super glue. And there you have it. Again, it's not going anywhere. You gotta let it dry for a little bit. Um, but we're gonna do a little cool technique on the edges. Uh, again, you're going to need super glue and this part we're going to add a little bit of a secret recipe that I like using a lot. So, I'll show you that in just a second. All right. So, we are back and we're going to show you something kind of cool here. So, I'm going to do a little bit of sand. Yeah. Real simple, really, really easy. Um, a very abundant resource on uh, the surface of the planet. So uh, if you don't have easy access to, um, to sand at like a local beach or, or what have you, you can pick up a bag of sand at your local hobby shop like uh, Michael's or um, Hobby Lobby for pretty cheap. I think it's like two bucks a bag. I haven't bought a, a lot of sand in a, in a long time because uh, you buy a bag of it and it will last you a long time. So, let me show you how to do this. So we're just going to take a little bit of the glue and we're going to go over the edges, like the bottom parts of the cork. Um, basically any areas that would um, more or less settle with sand due to erosion, uh, stuff like that, and weathering and whatnot. And then we're going to just take that part and we're just going to dip it into the sand. You don't have to be neat or anything in this phase. You can use a, a secondary um, you know, Tupperware container or something like that if you want to pour the sand on directly. Um, for purposes of this, I don't really think that's necessary. Um, you can kind of just lather on the slather on the sand and uh, have fun with it. 
long as you get it to stick, that's the important part. We'll get the inside edges a little bit. Actually, this part, I'm going to use um, a little bit of a technique that I was just talking about, where we kind of sprinkle the sand uh, uh, over something, use a little container, Tupperware, what have you. Just try not to get the sand everywhere, of course. I'm going to give it a little tap, tap, tap a and get all the excess sand off. That, and then when you're done with the excess sand here, you just do one of these. Waste not, want not, want not. So, go there, grab the other side. And to answer your question, yes, I go through a lot of super glue, and that's okay. Methods to the madness. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. not want not and now for the other side Tap, tap, tap a -roo. Okay, ooh, we lost a chunk. That's okay. Let's fill it in and start over. Waste not, want not, right? <laughs> All right. That looks pretty good. Got a nice little uh, valley situation going on there. I think you can kind of tell where the lava is going to go. So we're going to let this dry because um, it needs a, a little bit to dry. There's a lot of super glue I just put on there. So, uh, we'll let that dry for a little bit, and then we'll be back with the next phase. And this is uh, probably uh, something people haven't seen before. Uh, it's a little secret weapon of mine. Um, I'm a little reluctant to share it with people, but um, knowledge is power, and I like to share power. So, all right, so super glue is mostly dry. And now it's time for the secret weapon. Hot glue. That's right. This is my uh, best kept secret uh, until now. So this is how I do the lava flows and the uh, bases and stuff for the lava bases. So here we go. Afraid to spread it around. 
but a lava flow never hurt anybody. Relatively speaking, of course. The glue gun that I use is a uh, pretty cheap, um, but it gets the job done. That glue everywhere. Everywhere, I mean everywhere. Get it in there, in that valley. The idea here is to make it look like it's an actual flowing um, river of lava in between the uh, rock outcroppings there. So that's pretty much it. Um, really, really, really simple um, for this part here. So you want to let this dry until it gets to be like a, a milky um, texture, I guess. And then um, once it's dry, then we're going to uh, prime it just straight black the entire base. I'll, uh, I'll let this dry and then I'll be back after I've primed it black. And I'll show you the next steps of uh, how to make this amazing lava base. We'll see you soon. All right, cool. Our uh, lovely primed base is ready for some paint. Uh, just primed it black. So it's had some time to dry. And now we're going to start with the next step. Next step is Mechanicus Standard Gray. I'm just going to go straight Standard Gray on this. All the rocky parts. It's kind of a half dry brush. But you want to be pretty thick. Just get everywhere you can. Don't worry if you go over stuff. We just want to get a nice coat. All this stuff here. make this stuff look like rock, debris, you get the idea. have it. Okay, that is dry. Now for the next part. I'm going to go for some Mephiston Red. And this is going to be uh, added to the lava parts and the um, wrap parts around the, where the lava is. So, I kind of want to be sloppy but neat at the same time. I'll show you what I mean. Good amount on your brush, water it down a little bit. Use 
that wet pellet if you got one. If you don't, don't worry about it. Just use a little dish or something. Just mix it. Two parts paint, one part water. Wipe any excess off on a paper towel. Have at it. Get good, nice coverage on this. Again, don't worry about being too neat. You can be a little bit sloppy. As long as we get the areas that we need to get, we're good. Cool. So you get the idea. Now we're going to take the excess paint that we have on our brush, wipe out, wipe off most of it, um, because we're going to do some dry brushing around the edges of that rock to give it a little bit of a um, glow effect, I guess. that parts where um, everything's closer to the lava stream um, are going to be wicked hot so we get a good uh, baseline for that and you can go lightly over the other parts as well if you want the entire thing to look like it's really really hot um, I like the way that that looks so we'll just go ahead and do that Alright, so there you have that. We'll move on to the next color in just a second. We gotta let this dry. Stay tuned. All right, so our red is dry. Now for the fun part, uh, we wanna make the areas around the lava river here uh, look even hotter. So we're gonna use a color called Troll Slayer Orange. Uh, and for Troll Slayer Orange, we're just gonna get some on our brush. We're gonna wipe it off and do a, a very light dry brush, uh, kinda like this. heavier than that. There we go. That's the color we're looking for. Make that rock look hot. Again, you can go over the outer edges if you don't have to. I just like
like to. Cool. Oh, it's looking a little hotter. And that's what we want. I'll do the next color in just a second. All right. Next color we're going to use is none other than Uriel Yellow, and that we're going to do the same thing that we just did with the uh, Troll Slayer Orange. Um, we're just going to get the parts that we got earlier that and just brighten it up, make it look hot. All in the edges, real close to the lava stream. Again, optional stage, you can get around the other edges, um, you don't have to, but it looks kind of cool if you do. like that. Alright, now that that is done, all the edges and stuff like that, we're going to do um, a little bit of work on the actual lava here. So, we're going to start off with the fist in red again. And while the Mephiston Red is still wet, uh, we're going to add uh, Troll Slayer Orange. And then while the Troll Slayer Orange is still wet, we're going to do Uriel Yellow. A uh, little bit of a um, very simple wet blending technique. It doesn't have to be um, perfect because uh, wet blending is it can be a bit more difficult. But for purposes of this, we're going to go real simple. You want to mix up your Mephiston Red um, one part paint to one part water again. Make it flow really, really good. We don't want to dry it up too fast either. it's still wet so rinse off the brush real quick you don't have to get all the water off of it but most of it's good while that Mephiston red is still wet I go in the middle with your draw slayer orange 
afraid to get more and more paint if you need it. Kind of just go over it. The idea is the center of this lava stream is going to be hotter than the outer edges. Kind of let that swirl together, and that's completely fine. Rinse off your brush again. And then grab some of that Uriel Yellow. And go in the orange like we did with the red. Let's all blend together. nice looking lava river there um, and you can leave it uh, like this but there's another step that I like to do um, but you don't have to do it you could leave it like this and that's completely fine um, there may be some of you out there who are much much better at wet blending than I am and you know that's okay uh, like I said this is a very simple technique but still a very effective technique so We'll uh, let this dry up a bit, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, that's all dry. So, next step, really, really simple. Um, we're gonna use some art coat. It's a technical paint, and um, we're gonna apply that directly to the lava river. The reason we're doing this is because the next step that we're going to do afterwards helps stick uh, to the art coat a lot better. So just grab it on the main areas where the lava is. It doesn't have to be too, too thick. We just want to coat it. Gives it a nice little gloss too. So if you're skipping the next part, which you absolutely can do if you want more of a flowing lava style. That's it, just coat the lava river with some hard coat. A nice little glossy look to it. Let it dry. We'll do the next step once that's dry. Okay, so art coat is dry. Now it's time for the next step. We're gonna do another technical, uh, Mordant Earth. Now this is kind of like a, a black crackle paint. Uh, shake it up pretty good and you want to do is you want to um, really lay it on thick on the lava river. I mean like really thick. Uh, for best results really get this on there. You have to go back to the pot and grab more. It's fine but you want to really lay this on thick because it's a crackle paint. And the more you have on it, the bigger the cracks will be, and that's what we want. Normally I would say just say no to crack, but this is a good paint. We want lots of cracks.
Okay. There you have it. Uh, I'm going to let this dry for, I'd say for best results, probably an hour to two hours. Um, wait until there's no more gloss and it kind of looks like a, a flat and it begins to really crackle. Um, and then from there, uh, once this is dry, I'll show you the last step, which is another really, really simple one. But yeah, just let this dry. It'll do its thing. It works magic. It looks awesome. Let it dry. We'll be back. All right. So our crackle paint is dry. See, it looks pretty good. But there's one last step. This is a really easy step, and it takes like two seconds. So, we're gonna use some Lamian Medium, and we're just gonna go over the Lava River. And this is kind of just a sealant. Gotta make sure that nothing really moves. Just go over everything. There you have it. Once that dries, um, it'll kind of solidify the, the crackle in, uh, in place. As you can see, the magic of what we did with the wet blending underneath that crackle paint. Um, so you get some parts that are a little bit red, some parts that are a little bit orange, some parts that are a little bit yellow. Um, really gives the effect that the lava underneath is, is hot and then cooler and then a little colder um, underneath certain parts of it. And it just really makes it look pretty cool. So that's it. That's how I do my lava bases. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to uh, give this video a, a like, a comment, share it if you want to. And... Um, let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see next, because I got some stuff that I would love to do. Uh, just let me know. See you soon.